What is up, everyone? It is... Wait, let me make sure. Can you guys hear me loud and clear? I've I'm repositioned my camera, so I'm a little bit lower, but I'm trying to see if I can get all this in one, in one camera instead of dual cameras. I think it might be a little bit easier. Hope you all are doing well. Uh, this is Flow Tricks. We are every Sunday night for the time being until I say otherwise, uh, five o'clock Central Standard Time. We are doing live streams where you join in and ask me whatever questions you want. If you need to know about nunchucks or staff spinning, or if you want to have ideas about how to perform, or if you want tips about booking gigs or anything like that, I can, I can share with you my advice of 10 years in the business of this awesomeness. Um, first and foremost, I hope you all are, hope you all are doing well. We're on week 10,497,000 of COVID, it feels like. <laughs> things are starting to return back to normal, whatever that may be. But at the same time, things are still like in this constant shift. There's a lot of things happening. And, I, you know, I, I recently made a, po a post on Facebook about this, but just I just hope you guys are, uh, no matter what you're doing with your spare time or however you're doing it, I just hope you guys are always taking time out for yourselves to create that space um, because the world's a little bit crazy right now, at least in America, in the United States, we're having some craziness. Like there's, there's so many different things happening that it's really good to have an outlet. It's really good to always make time for yourself to take those walks and to do those little things just to make sure you are centered, that you are in control of yourself and then when you go do the other things, you can do it from a more balanced standpoint, which I think is very important. So anyway, with that said, um, I think I'm going to start off each stream with a cool quote that I find because I tend to like to collect quotes. So this quote is from Bruce Lee. And Bruce Lee says, do not fear, <laughs> I butchered it already. Do not fear failure, not failure, but low aim is the crime. In great attempts, it is glorious even to fail. I think that's awesome. That's an awesome quote. I love that quote. Um, so it's not failure. It's not. That's not what you should fear. It's low aim. I think. I think that's really neat. Just think about that for a second. I, I don't need to explain it. I don't think. But you know, it's like, it's like you have this thing that's comfortable, and then you have the thing that makes you grow. And the thing that makes you grow is usually the most painful, the most difficult things, are outside this zone. So like. If you're aiming low and you're staying within your comfort zone, there's very little growth that happens. So in a way, I feel like a lot of growth is failure. A lot of growth is making a lot of mistakes. You know, just as long as your mistake isn't so bad that it's, you can like, that it creates permanent issues. I, one second. Okay. <laughs> Unless your mistake is so big that it creates permanent issues, I feel like the that that's, that's how we should all be, is, is always extending beyond our comfort zones, always trying to pull in and make those mistakes. So I think, I think a person that doesn't make any mistakes is usually a person that's very huddled in their shell. So it's, it's important to get out of there because that's how you become big and expansive. Um, and that's really all I have to say. I just, I just love that quote from Bruce Lee. I think it's awesome. Um, also, just want to give a shout out to Dark Monk. Dark Monk makes all of my training chucks as well as almost all of my fire gear. And also a shout out to Flow Toys, who I'll be ordering a brand new, amazing, amazing staves from them. Um, I've got some, some new LED gear coming in from Flow Toys as well, which I'm pretty excited about. Uh, Flow Toys makes incredible LED chucks, LED staves, and with the lifetime warranty, they're pretty awesome. Also, um, I also wanted to talk to you guys, before I, before I begin and, and go into comments, I want to talk to you guys about ken.flowtricks at gmail.com. That's K-E-N dot flow tricks, you know, flow tricks at gmail.com. Um, a person recently sent me a video and I would love to critique it, but he sent the video in the email. And I just have to say, if you want to send me a video for me to review, please, please, please uh, either send it already encoded in a video. So uh, you can send it to me in Facebook Messenger, for instance, the video file or, you know, the video itself. But um, just out of viruses and, and security reasons, I'm not able to open direct attachments and emails. So if you send me a video with an email in it, um, please just link it to, make, upload it to YouTube and make it unlisted so no one can see it and then, and then send me that link. It'll be a lot easier or send it to me on my Facebook as well because that encodes it as well. But if I get an email with an attachment in it, I, I just, I'm not able to open that just because of the potential for all it takes is one hater to send me, you know, an email with a virus and my whole computer and the stream goes down and all that jazz. So 
Um, yeah, like I said, so if you want to just send me a link, that would be fantastic. Um, I've got a few questions that I'd like to, that I'm going to answer. And then also, if you have any questions, please, please, please answer, ask them right now, because this is the time we're going to just cover it again. It's like a, an hour to you guys, whatever you all want to learn. I'm going to give some shout outs really quick. First, I'm going to jump on my Facebook page, make sure I don't, I always know my YouTubers, but my Facebook one is always tricky. Okay, I don't see any comments on Facebook yet, so that's good. But I'm gonna give a couple shout outs to people that like the video. There's Kent Hertz, Corrine Watson, Corinne, I'm sorry, uh, Morgan Lee Knudsen. And then on the YouTube side, I can go off the comments. We have What's Up Thomas, he says hi. And Yandertail, hey Ken, hope you're doing good. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing pretty good. Um, like I said, you know, life's been, a, life's been pretty crazy lately, but overall, it's good, it's good. Nico Ramos says howdy, that's hello, hello. Um, Yandertail, can you cover the wheel? Yeah, let me let me add that in here. We can definitely cover the wheel. Hostile graveyard. Oos. <laughs> Ike Flow, what's up? Uh, he asked if there's a flail behind me on the wall, and the answer is no. That's not a flail. That's um, behind me over there is fans. Nothing. You're wondering if this is a flail. It's not. There's fans. And then this is, this is, uh, I haven't connected it, but this is Veilpoi, so if I connected it, it'd be like a, a veil on a string that you, that you swing around. And then the thing that looks like a flail, though, is, is pretty cool. I, this is probably one of the props that I'm worst at, but um, I got it anyways, and they are fans. I'm not very good at them. I've seen people do tricks with them, but just trying to work out the catches and whatever, whatever whatever the fan people do, I'm not sure. But I have them. <laughs> As you can see, I'm not very good with them. <laughs> Problem is, is I wanna flip them like chucks, but when you flip them this direction, all the air resistance just stops it from moving completely. So you can, you can give it more like a, like, like slicing into it lengthwise, but I haven't played with it enough to really get a feel. It's definitely a float, it definitely floats a lot. But no, that's not a flail. That's, it's, uh, it's two fans and my veil poi. All right. Um, Hostel says, social distancing, a concept long overdue. Yeah, well, I don't know. In, in my area, less people are wearing masks than ever before and socially distanced. When all the bars opened, no one wears masks. And uh, it's just interesting to see that like, we have, we're having this revolution going on um, with regards to social justice, but the moment that happened, we had a lot of issues. And it's almost like COVID got swept under the rug and it no longer matters, but um, our stats are getting pretty staggering over here in the US, so just everyone be safe. All right, let's see. I wanna also say hello to Helder uh, Bothrum. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, so. Let's get started. Um, got some questions. I think I have uh, Anthony Trickshot Taylor. Let me know if that video you just sent me was something you wanted me to review on the live stream or if it was just something you wanted to share. I'm uh, more than happy to post it up on the live stream if, if that's what you're looking for. So we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and uh, cover a couple of the questions. First question, let's just go ahead and cover. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, so staff movements for uh, the transition into nunchucks was something that I believe Ike Flo asked me in an email. And then I also have a, a question about how to do the wheel. So let's start with the wheel because the staff move transitioning into nunchucks, we, there's a lot of it. But the wheel is one thing. So I'm gonna move over here, let's get some lighting, boom. Let's first cover the wheel. The wheel is basically where your fingers are inside the chain or the rope like so, and your hands are spinning in a way that it keeps the nunchuck rolling. Now there's different variants of the wheel. Um, just see here. There's different variants of the wheel because you can go into a two, two finger wheel, you can go into a one finger wheel. You, can, you also have like horizontal wheels and obviously diagonal wheels. Um, but they're almost all the same concept except for how to keep the, the chuck from floating. A couple of key tricks, I'm gonna flip this up here. A couple of tricks in getting the wheel to go. Number one is if you have weighted ends, it tends to carry itself more. So if you use lightweight chucks, they totally work. Um, but you have to, 
it takes more effort to keep it going. With heavier chucks, it's the opposite. It's hard to start the wheel, but once you get it going, it's very easy to keep it going. You almost have to put no effort into it and it can carry longer. Like I can do a wheel and make it last longer without thinking about it unless my hand slips out of it, but it takes a lot less thought once it gets going. You just basically got to keep it going. Um, there's two ways to do it. One, the hand can, one hand can be very still and the other, both hands are moving at the same time. They're both just fine. So when I'm, I'm gonna explain it from both hands moving, and, but just know that you can get away with only one, one hand moving on it. The, the idea of the wheel is if you're holding the chuck in front grips, you're gonna have your pointer fingers, they're gonna be over the tops of the tab like this. Now you gotta be able to propel the wheel one direction. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna twist one of our hands, like we're gonna, I'm gonna say my left hand is gonna twist 180 degrees this way. So basically, the wheel that's on my left, my pointer finger is below the string, and here the pointer finger is above the string, and then I'm gonna turn sideways. So we have the pointer fingers on both sides like this, right? If I did not have this chuck with me, we're just thinking this is on the top, this one's on the bottom. It makes sense because if our fingers are to move this way to pull the string over, this would have to be on the bottom, this would have to be on the top. So it's like this, obviously, because if my finger was up here and we moved it, it would just drop down. But if it's below, it'll move it upwards. So we got this. The whole idea of getting the wheel, the hardest part is getting it started. And then the second hardest is keeping it going. It's a lot easier to keep it going, but getting it started is usually the hardest part. So let me explain the best way that I can tell you how to do this. The best way that I know how to do the wheel is it's almost like, it's almost like I'm leaning back and then dropping it forward. So when I have my chucks in my hand like this, the chucks are leaning back like this, right? So I'll take my right hand and really lean it backwards for a second, because we gotta give it a nice oomph, like a nice propel to start. But when I propel it forward, my left hand is gonna do most of the propulsion. The reason for that is because the focus will almost always be to the outside when people do things, just because it's gonna have the most force. But then, if you put all the force on the outside, but there's not much force on the inside, which people tend to neglect, it's gonna stop. It won't carry the momentum forward. But if you put, if you put the focus on the inside, because the outside's a lot easier if you focus on the harder part and you just focus on the inside, really pushing upwards with it. Easy to push down, a little bit, takes a little bit more thought to push up, boom. Then you can get it to start. So hold it backwards like this, focuses on the top right now, but then when you propel it, focuses on the bottom, pushing it up. Now the way that this works is, I usually like to hold my fingers like this when I do the wheel. So when I'm here, right now it's not set in place, but once we go, you can see that my fingers are almost, it's almost like I'm sticking my hand straight forward and then my pointer fingers go inward like this. Okay. I'm gonna do it from this, from this stance here to start with, okay? So my wrist twists 180 degrees to get underneath. Twist it this direction here. Lift it up towards my face. Put a lot of force behind the backhand going upwards. Don't hit your face. So pull the chuck forward a little bit. And then what you're gonna do is you're not gonna go for a circle, more like an oblong uh, ellipsis. Ellipsis? No. What is it called? Oval. <laughs> so it's not, like, it's not like a circle like this. It's more almost like a line that, that has circles attached to it. So we're really trying to get it to go, like we're basically trying to get the fingers to pass by each other, fingers pass by each other as they swivel around each other like this. So we go here a lot of force in the back of the hand and push. Once you get it going, then it's basically the fingers are moving around each other, kind of like more like oh, well, You can make it circular, just try not to get too circular or you'll go outside the range. And the option really is you can either have one finger go over it like this, or you can have them both go. I prefer both because I think you have more control if you want to go to one finger or you want to switch it off, but you're welcome to do both, both variations. So here, lift it up, put more force behind you, push, push it down. And here's the thing, the faster you go with this, the faster you're gonna have to move to keep up with it. So we've gotten the launch, maintaining is a different story. Generally speaking, when, when you maintain a wheel, I would recommend that you go as slow as possible to start with. So go really slow. I mean, you can start off fast, but the faster you go, the faster your hand's gonna have to move to keep up with it. So you try to find that point where you can slow it down a little bit get it nice and slow so you can just kind of feel how the wheel needs to move with, without uh, too much force. Because again, as we go faster, it gets harder and harder to maintain.
And that's really it. And then the only question after that is how do you get out of it? There's a lot of different ways. One is you can, you can pinch your fingers together and that will cause them to kind of crump, crinkle up like that. And from there, you can just grab one of the chucks and pull that direction out. So stop, grab, turn. I mean, there's a lot of different ways. Some people, if you get comfortable, you can go to one finger too. So if I'm going multi-finger, I can go to one finger and drop the chuck and <laughs> be done with it. Um, as you go to one finger, it's generally better to, to have it a little bit slower. And then you just kind of reach up and I don't know why I'm missing this. This, this one is usually pretty natural. Um, maybe because I didn't spin nunchucks all day today. I'm just jumping in on this. <laughs> all right, here we go. There we go, all right, geez. That one is, I don't know, usually I get that one all the time, but just having one of those days, failure. <laughs> but the, the easier version is just to crinkle your fingers together, let them stop, grab one, and then come out of it. Boom. Wait a second. Ow. I know why. Hmm. You're gonna laugh, but the difference in length and chucks is huge for me. So I, I usually use I usually use the shorter one, and this is shorter by like one finger, and it's gonna make a huge difference. I bet this is gonna be a lot easier for me to wheel out of. Watch this. Well, maybe not. Or maybe I'm just having a bad day. <laughs> there we go. I still think that this is the one. I think this is the one still. I think even slightly longer, I was in, when you're expecting it to be the, the other pair of chucks, like if you're expecting a different length, it can still mess you up. So let's see if I can do it three times. Yeah, it definitely could be the length on that one. It's funny, right? But we just get used to stuff like that. All right. Hostile graveyard geometry class much? <laughs> ah, so that is basically how to do a wheel. Um, there's a lot of different ways to get into it, but anytime you're in two front grips, it's easy just to twist one hand over and get into it. Or if we're going sideways too, it's the same, same concept. Um, we're just basically creating two different forces, but instead of up and down, it needs to be side to side and it needs to be pushing. Horizontal is a little bit harder. I'm not gonna get into this too much, but you do have to keep more force. It needs to, it needs to be faster because the chucks are always wanting to fall down. So it has to be fast enough for, uh, for the chucks to have enough momentum to shoot to the outside to stay horizontal. So keep that in mind as well. Now, the other question that I had is about transitioning staff moves over to chucks. Let me go ahead and grab my staff here. Give me just a second here. We're going to use a fire staff. I'm gonna use a fire staff for this one. And so the question is, is how do you transition over a staff to chucks or vice versa? Or what are some good transitions? I do wanna say when you're working on transitioning uh, props over, you have to look at the characteristics of the prop. A lot of times, especially, especially if you're using a single chuck and a single staff, it's a, lot, it's a lot easier to get the same concept going. I'll give you an example. A front to back hand roll, right? You could probably do with the staff. Just keep in mind that there's a bendable sender here. So if you hold the staff, if you look at this, okay, you can basically say, if I'm in a front grip here, this equals the same as uh, kind of an offset grip here because this would be the center of balance. You're gripping slightly behind it. And as you do the roll, the center of the staff is gonna roll behind it as you catch to the other side. So if you look at it from that way, you can see that this front to back hand roll is very similar to, a, to this kind of roll with, with the staff, which I don't actually know the, the technical staff move. But the fact is, since it doesn't bend, you have to make some accommodation. And some of it's nice because whereas the, the rope will wrap, this will just keep rolling around. And because of the fact it's solid and can keep rolling around, it can give you like advantages to certain moves because you don't have to worry about the staff bending across your hand as opposed to a rope. So all the wrist rolls work. So that's the front to back. Obviously, the back to front will be the same if we hold it in the back grip and we roll it. The only thing is, is the, the rope's not gonna wrap around your hand, so I tend to roll my hand over it to get it to this position. So the back to front, like that. If you grab it over here, it's very similar, back to front, like that. And then let's talk about um, the back to back. The back to back's a little bit different though, because 
we have to work our way around it. So once we do this back to back, which is this, I'm gonna show you a little bit easier way. You see how it kind of has a little bit more jump. That's just because again, the rope, the rope can bend around my wrist, whereas the staff is very solid. So it's gonna, it's gonna be, it's gonna have a little bit more jump because it's gonna climb across my hand as we go across this. Whereas if I use a rope, this thing will just bend around. So it's gonna be, it's actually gonna be a little bit more secure with the nunchuck than with the staff. But at the same time, you probably could, and I haven't really played with it too much, but you probably could come up with some really like creative ways to roll it because it bends or because it doesn't bend that you couldn't that you couldn't do with the nunchuck because it's stiff because it's still you know like i said like even all these kind of crazy rolls like you can get it to roll around the elbow stuff you so that would be very difficult for the chucks would be very easy because the moment the motion doesn't stop when it does wrap because it never wraps and then we got the front to front which is probably the most tricky of the four for the chucks and I haven't really tried it with the staff, but I'm gonna assume it's the same thing. You're gonna basically do the same thing. You're gonna grab off to the side. I'm gonna give it a little bit more space. I'm gonna aim this to, for, to rotate underneath my wrist like this. Question is, is will it drop when we do this? You probably have to put a little bit more force into it. Yeah, and then you have to kind of twist your wrist into it too. So, cause you gotta get this thing to roll all the way across here. So you gotta find a way to trap this just a little bit more, whether it's dropping your hand a little bit so it can roll up and get in between the hands. You can do it though. You just have to really wait to extend this part until it starts to come upwards before you grab it. It's a little bit trickier, I think. I don't even know if it's worth it. <laughs> I don't know if it's worth it, but you can definitely pull that one off. Um, the transitions are great. What about a moon wave? <laughs> Here's a moon wave. Thank you. There we go. Yeah, you can't moon wave, obviously. <laughs> but what about something like an X sketch? Can we X sketch? Well, I think we can pull that one off. I think we can. And the reason why we can pull an X sketch off is simply because it doesn't need to bend for an X sketch to work. Because uh, it, even though the force is pulling, our hands are just controlling most of the motion. It doesn't depend on anything bending for an X sketch to work. This kind of creates an interesting grip though. And as you can see, my grip's a little bit more bent with the staff but you can definitely pull off an X sketch. And again, the nice thing is because it's solid, because it's stiff, you might be able to, you might be able to get away with all different kinds of contacty moves from that. I'm not sure. It's not something I've explored too much, but you can see that it works. Obviously rips could also work because you're just pulling it into a hand roll anyway, so you can get away with your rips, with your rips. You should even be able to do your anti rips, you know? Um, I'll show you one of my favorite things with the staff though is a variant of the back-to-back -back. so we have you know how you have your back-to-back -back like this pretty simple you can do the same thing with the staff of course but it has more of an awkward of an awkward reach because it has to roll across the wrist and cover so much ground like I said um, it does have more awkward feel but I found that you can use your fingers in the process and have a little bit more control over the staff if we roll it through the finger instead of over the wrist we're gonna have a little bit more control now it's not a wrist roll anymore but I feel like this variation is better for the staff, in my opinion. And it's gonna be the same thing. We're gonna be in a, what would be considered a front grip for chucks and we're moving it to a back grip like we always do. But in this case, we're gonna change things up now. Instead, the original back-to-back -back would be we roll it across the wrist, right? And it rolls across the back and we grab it to the top. But this time what we're gonna do, in the back grip, we're gonna take our pointer finger and we're gonna just sneak it to the top like this. Everything is gonna roll across the pointer finger instead, causing it to do a lot less spin. Since it covers less ground, we have a little bit more control over it. So again, if I was in a, technically a front grip, we rolled it this direction. Now as we, we spin it upside down to where the palm is facing up, sneak that pointer finger over to the top like this, right? And instead of rolling it across the wrist, we're gonna roll it across the top of the pointer finger like this. And then as it spins over, we can grab it in pencil grip and keep it going. So, um, let's see here. We can either go across the top and grab it from there. Yeah, see, <laughs> so I'm analyzing this as we go because I've never really, I don't teach this one too often. You can see me do this a lot when I do my three-point anti-spins. I feel like the anti-spin hand rolls are especially nice by doing this type of grip. But yeah, you're sneaking the top of the pointer finger. It's creeping across, uh, completely omitting the need to go through the back of the hand. So it's going across here. Point your finger goes up, 
but it does still roll across the back of the hand. It just doesn't have to cover so much ground. It doesn't have to cover the bottom of the wrist over to the back of the hand. So there's a lot more control in this. So here to there. Once you do that, you'll find that you have a lot of control in it, which is why I like it. Like you can move your hand in spin with it to create a circle. And you'll see it kind of creates like this isolation motion. So now we're just doing the same thing. We're just doing that same, that same kind of hand roll, except my hand is also spinning in the same direction. And I'm focusing on one point to be as stuck as possible before I do the hand roll. Stuck, hand roll, stuck. And if you're comfortable with any spins, which we would get, I would say this is more in the intermediate to advanced range, then you can go the opposite direction and create pinpoints as well, like that. And it's the same concept, it's just rolling across the top, rolling across the back of the hand. Finger, roll across the back of the hand. Pointer finger, roll across the back of the hand. And it just goes on and on and on. Those are some staff variants for Chucks. I also added one of my favorite uh, staff rolls because I think that that's just my favorite one of all of them. I think it's, for me, it feels more, it feels like it melds better with, with the staff to go that direction. All right, uh, Yandertail, the other day I was browsing on YouTube and found a pretty cool nunchuck neck roll behind the pass thingy. Uh, I tried to learn it by just seeing it, but couldn't. Do you have like a video of the neck roll that you saw perhaps? There's, there could be a few different kinds. Um, there could be a few different kinds that, that I'm thinking about. When people generally do neck rolls, there's like a roll where it kind of tucks across the back of the shoulder and it flies across to the other side. But uh, that's generally more like contact style nunchucks. I don't, I don't know if that's what it was. I, I don't do that one too much if that is it. Um, but if you were looking at that one, you want you want as short, short as possible for the rope. Because you know how we're talking about the staff can get away with it because it doesn't bend. So it's easier for it to roll across. It's easier for it to roll across the body. Let me see. Yeah, so. It's easier to roll a staff across the body uh, because it doesn't have a bendable center. And with the nunchuck, it's kind of the same thing. If we're talking about the neck roll that I'm thinking about, the, the smaller the chuck is in the center, the better it is because the more it bends, the more it's gonna lose oomph. It's just gonna lose the momentum. This one, it still has to go pretty hard. Let me know if that was the one you were talking about or if, or if you have a link to the video, I'd be, I'd be happy to take a look at it and see. Um, there's not a whole lot of neck rolls. There's, you know, there's, there's ones where people can like do a one-handed pass across the neck like this. That's just like you're going into a low grip, pass it across the back, and it would generally be just like you're, like you're gonna catch it, except for instead, you just turn your wrist and, and grab it. Um, if you do it without, if you just do a straight one, you can actually grab it in a back grip like this. So here, cross, grab, you're in a back grip, have some fun with it. Um, and then, if you go the opposite direction too, there's this really interesting one where you can grab it behind your back. So this one, we're coming across to the same side like this. So it's, it would be kind of like how I do that reverse grip one, except for you grab it very low grip and you let it wind across the back of your neck like this and it's gonna fall down to a waist grip. And the, the nice thing about this is you actually just kind of let it snake itself around and fall. You're just trying to get your hand to the, to the back you want to get your elbow behind the back of your head, but you want your hand to be on the other side. And you need it to, you need the chuck to start coming back towards your body. Gravity is naturally gonna make this fall this direction, but you're gonna try to aim higher than where your hand is, so when you let go, it drops right into your hand. This is probably not the neck roll you were talking about, but those are just some examples of, of variants. There's not a whole lot of variants with the neck that I know. You know, obviously we have those types of things too. But you let me know. Let me know if you let me know like what you'd like to see, or if that was one of the things you'd like to see. Definitely let me know. All right. And again, if you're just joining us, this is the Flowtrix live stream. We uh, are covering all your questions. So um, I'm going to go ahead and check my email. If you want to send me a link to one of your videos, it's ken.flowtrix at gmail.com ken.flowtricks at gmail.com. If you send me a video again, please send me a link. Don't send me any, don't send me any um, attachments, please, just because of viruses and whatnot. Um, let me see. I'm just double checking here to see if there's any other questions right now. 
Perfect. Also, if you just have links to videos that you'd like me to check out, let me know that too. I'm more than happy to take a look at videos. Just let me know when you send me a video, this is also important, when you send me a video, let me know if you want to critique or if you just want us to watch it because there's a difference. Sometimes, sometimes people don't want to be critiqued, you know, and so when you offer your advice, it can, it can hurt their feelings. So um, just, just make sure that you state that you want to be critiqued or you want me to help you with whatever you're sending and I'll give that to you. Otherwise, I'll, I'll just look at it, point out some of the things that I think are great and move, move forward from there. All right, let's see. Perfect. Um, I think since there's no questions, let's just go ahead and work on some random nunchuck moves. <laughs> All right. Well, we were talking about hand rolls anyways, so let's, let's talk about some variant hand rolls. So I'm going to assume you know the four basics, which is back to front, front to back, back to back, which is harder, obviously. This is this next step up. And then the next step after that is going to be the front to front, right? But there's more. And they're not always too, it takes a little bit of different, uh, you have to look at it a little bit differently. For instance, there's a 720 wrist roll. Oops, a little bit too low here. There's, this is what I get for playing Last of Us right before the stream. I should have been training, but oh my God, that game is so awesome. This is a, this is a 720 wrist roll and it's, it's a step up from front to front hand rolls. So I'm gonna assume you know all four of the hand rolls. So this is gonna be more towards the higher intermediate. We're gonna basically do a front to front hand roll, but we're gonna roll our hand a little bit lower. We're gonna be in a middle grip, almost to a low grip, right? And what we're gonna do to get this to work is we're gonna do something called a reset where we do a, where we do a front roll, but then our hand twists twice in the same direction. What we're trying to do is reset the motion so what the first thing we're gonna do is as soon as it starts to creep up like this, so as soon as the front roll starts to happen, my hand flips over to reset it, allows it to roll past, and then it twists back to give it one more extra turn. So to get the 720 from this way, what we're really thinking about is the moment the hand roll touches the wrist and it starts to revolve, my hand twists all the way over, and then by the time it starts to lose the motion, then it twists again, and that twisting motion of the second, like once it resets, is going to cause it to roll across one more time, allowing us to grab it. All this is in one fell motion, so it's kind of hard to see, and I wish I could play it in slow motion, but that's kind of how we get the 720. Remember, keep your grip kind of low, keep your grip kind of low, and make sure you twist, reset, twist again. It's, you can't do it infinitely, I've tried, <laughs> but... Um, you might be able to get it even more than 720. It just, because of the force that it takes though, it, it would take a little bit of practice to get past that. Mm. Also, I uh, want to shout out to Caesar and Jess Want, Flora. Hello, hello. Welcome to the live stream. Again, if you have any questions about nunchucks, um, or if you want to know some techniques, or if you have a video to share, uh, you know, you can send me ken.flowtricks at gmail.com. Send me a link. we will happy to take a look at it. Otherwise, we'll just keep going here. All right. So we have the 720 handle like this. What else can we do? Oh, I think someone just... Perfect. Okay, Yendertail just sent me the link. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. Just a second here. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at this here. I got an email from Yandertail about the, the neck pass, and I'm, we're gonna go ahead and take a look and see what, what this might be. All right. Oh, we're talking about Tan Guy. <laughs> Give me a second here. So he said around 122, there's gonna be a neck roll. Let's go ahead and get, go over here. Tan Guy is a beast. This guy is awesome. Gonna be right around here somewhere. So I haven't done this move. Let's go ahead and break it apart. See if I can figure it out. First thing you do if you want to learn a move, put it in slow motion. Looks like it's a standard neck pass. Okay. So it looks like it's a standard neck pass, but then he lets it 
he kind of does this contact roll that happens. Let me let me check it again here. He does a neck pass. Oh wow. Okay. Let me get over here. Have not practiced this move yet, so I first I need to feel this out. This is happening all live, so first I need to understand what he's doing. It looks like he's doing this kind of pass, but instead of allowing it to, let's see, how is he doing? I'm gonna check it one more time here. <laughs> All right, so he's passing it. Yeah, he's using his other arm. Okay, so he's passing it. Gosh, oh no! But he's using his other arm to. Uh... <laughs> he's passing it, but he's using using his other arm to let it dip underneath, and that's the part that I'm trying to understand how that's happening. Let's take a look at that again in real time here. Keep in mind, I've never done this move before, so we're gonna try to break it apart. All right. Yeah, he's passing it with enough force for the chuck to pass through his neck. Wow, okay, I see, I see. Let's get back. It's gonna take some practice, but when he's doing the pass, he's passing it with enough force for this chuck to move past his arm and to get underneath here, or maybe he's tucking, he's tucking it over, I see, I see. So he's really trying to, oh wow. He's really trying to get it, get it to force underneath his arm so this can wrap around and he can grab behind it. So when you're doing the pass, what he's really looking to do is get this trapped across his neck to the other side so he can, he can grab it here. So I think that would be the first thing to practice if I were you, is to practice this kind of connection. Again, I've never done this move before. I'm just trying to analyze it, but it looks something like that. And I think if you practice it enough, you could get a nice smooth motion with it, or you could find the sweet spot for that pass. So again, it's like a one-handed neck pass, except we're trying to actually, we need to get, create more space so the chuck doesn't stop here, but continues to roll until it gets to the other side of the neck over here. Once that happens, you, you trap it with your arm like this, which will naturally make this chuck want to fall down this direction. As it falls, you're gonna have your hand behind your back and you're gonna catch it behind there. That's the technique. So once you understand like how it's put together, then the next thing you gotta do is just drill, drill, drill. So the next thing, like if I was to wanting to train this, the next thing I would play with is where my grip can be to make this easier and where this pass needs to be along the neck. Like if I put it pretty close, we'll notice it doesn't work. So it sounds like I need to stretch this across my neck a little bit more. So now I'm gonna give it like a nice, a nice long one. So I'm gonna try to choke myself a little bit more. I'm gonna lower my grip and see if we can get it to cross a little bit better. This appears to have a little bit more success. And because of that, I can also, if I wanted to, use that chuck that I was struggling with to get the roll to happen because it was longer. Remember, the slightly longer rope would probably work even better for this move. So now I try the other chuck and it moves like butter. Why is that? Because I have a little bit more space. Remember how I was struggling with this one earlier for the one-handed finger wheel? Well, now this works in my favor because I know what this move needs. This is, this is so crazy and this is so cool about like when you're working with chucks. So even though, even though these ropes are so subtly, like there's not, there's, you know, there's like a one finger difference, it's huge in terms of being able to nail different moves a little bit easier. So I've got a slightly longer one this time, which almost looks the same. I'm gonna grab it in middle grip. I'm gonna choke it across. It's gonna be like a one-handed pass, except for I eat it a little bit more to cause the mo motion to cross over at the neck, get it to the other side, pinch upwards, and then try to get a behind the back catch from here. Whoosh, catch. And then it's just a matter of practicing it until you can find the, the nice sweet spot to get it all together. Eh. Now you're gonna notice that my mechanics are really jagged and, and moving. And this is good for you guys to see too because I'm new at this. So because I'm doing a move I've never done before, I have to over exaggerate the moves until I can find the perfect spot. Once you find that sweet spot, repetition is what'll make it look more natural. So keep that in mind, even people like me who've been doing this for a long time, if we do different moves, we still have to train our bodies to get used to, to, get used to this different kind of throw. Let me try it again. <laughs> I don't just want to practice this. This is fun. Ugh, that was a bad one. But you can see, I. You basically need to. You need. To, yeah, this one. I. This one covered. This one actually went so far that I didn't get enough chuck. I could barely grab it. So I can't. 
I can't go too far with my grip or I'll actually overshoot it too. Oops. <laughs> you guys get to watch me train the same move over and over again. Rah. I think that's really neat though, and it's, it's a nice variant to just the one-handed neck pass too. We could probably one-handed neck pass and, and you know, just throw that into a nice sweet combo. Actually, and then you also have this behind the back one here, which would probably work really well to get into that one if I could only do this move more seamlessly, but once, once this gets trained up, that becomes another part of the arsenal. That's a pretty cool move. I have no idea what it's called. I never thought about, um, I never thought about a behind the neck pass that you overshoot. So this can all of a sudden becomes an in the front pass almost looks like this. It's pretty clever. Um, Ike Flo says, nice Ken, thanks for the staff moves. You're most, most welcome. If you have other questions about staff moves too, we could, we could cover more of that. Um, Tan Guy is a uh, freestyle nunchuck champion. So he is, I love it because with, with nunchucks, there's so many innovators. There's so many, there's like a group of people that are just coming up with new moves all the time, just, just like I have. So definitely it's good to like watch other videos and see what other inspirations you can pull. That was a pretty sweet move and I might actually practice that until I can get it pretty, pretty good because I think that'd be really fun to learn. Um, all right, so Mr. Wonderful says, hi Ken, what's up? How long is your chucks or ropes with chucks? Is six to seven inches good length to start out with? I generally shoot for five. Five inches is what it is, but the size of your fist makes a huge difference. For me, I like it to where it just, if I make a fist with the chucks, and I hold my hand upside down like this, I want it to almost pinch my fingers just barely, like it just barely hangs out. So whatever this length is, is what I like. Now, when I was talking about like slightly longer this, you can see that this one is so subtly different, but if I make the fist here, it's a lot more loose, it's a lot more lax. If I pull it together, they don't pinch my hands. Um, and this will actually make a huge difference between what techniques are easier than if I do this, where if I pinch it, I can really, like, it's a little bit tighter. The difference is very small. I've never actually measured it out, but the, but the difference between these two chucks is fairly small. But when you're doing things that require every single little piece, like finger rolls, for instance, or even that neck pass that I just did, uh, the length will make all the difference um, in terms of your timing. Because if you misjudge the length of a chuck, then it can throw off your technique. But generally speaking, I don't have a length per se. I probably should. I go off by feeling. I just grab it, and if if it feels like it's tight around my fist, then it's it's the right length for me. If it's longer though, you just have to adjust accordingly. So if I am spinning this longer, this longer chuck, it's very slightly longer. Then it just means I have to clear more rope. Now if it's exceptionally longer, you're gonna run into some problems. Whereas like say this is twice as long. Say the rope is this long and on top. As you do your hand rolls, you kind of have to slide your hand down to grab it. So you have to start working new techniques into all the techniques that we do in order to clear the space required uh, to make it work. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, IQ Flow says, can you do snakes with the staff up and down only or is it out to the side? Can you do snakes with the staff up and down or only out to the side? Hmm. Just a second. That's a good question. I just want to make sure that snake is kind of like a body tracer, if I remember right. I've used this term, but I just want to make sure we're talking about the same thing. I generally find with the staff, if we're talking about like body tracing, like where we're spinning it through the arm, generally works better to the side. But I mean, I suppose you could also push it down here, for instance. It's just creating like Creating lines vertically, I find it is a little bit more difficult, but you can kind of push it through these lines. But if you have like this long arm, to me that, that just feels the easiest to be able to, to push through this, this line in order to get that snaky motion going. Let me know if that was the kind of question you have. But like you can like, for instance, if we're doing this motion where we're doing a reverse figure eight, but then the hand pulls behind, you can the moment the hand gets underneath the armpit and starts to pull down, you can push it down to your hip, for instance. So we can get some sort of snake-like motion. I just feel like there's not a whole lot. We don't have as much room to work with in order to do it, but you can kind of work it through the body as, as we're going like up and down. Generally though, I find horizontal to be a lot easier. All right. 
Hostel says, you have to bring Seth on the show more often. Dude has some serious achievements since starting out. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's a busy man now, so um, I'd love to get him more involved, actually. I think, I think one of these live streams, I'll, I should pull him in. I think that'd be great. Yeah. Mr. Wonderful says, ah, gotcha. Thank you very much for the info. You're most welcome. Let me know if you have more. You know, we've still got about 15, 20 minutes at least of this stream, so I'm happy to help. Ike Flow, no, it's in isolation, usually done with the club. Gosh, you know, Ike Flow, um, let me see. What I need to know is, because there's different terminologies, so I want to make sure it's like it's attached to your elbow. Hmm. Yeah, you know, it, maybe if you can send me a video, um, and then I can take a look at it. I'm not much of a club spinner, so I may not have answers. I may not have answers right away for your question, but if you give me, you know, by next week, I can, I can definitely take a look at it. I'm not sure what a snake is, unfortunately. I'm looking it up right now. Um, okay, I see this guy that's... <laughs> I'll show you what I'm looking at here. I'm watching this guy's, but I, I'm not sure if this is what we're talking about. He's calling it a snake, though. Yeah, I have no clue. <laughs> Tell you what, uh, Ikeflo, if you want to um, send me uh, an email with the link to a successful snake, what it looks like, then I can take it, I can tear it apart more and just play with it in the in the background and then we can cover it next week. I'm just not sure. I'm not sure. I'm I'm sure that that was part of a snake, but um, if it's a technique that I don't know, especially if it's an advanced spinner one, it may take me a little bit more time than what I can do on the stream yet. It's in line with your forearm, though. I'm wondering if we're talking. Oh uh, yeah, it's it's really going to be tough for me to tell like what what it might be. If it's an isolation with the forearm, though, I can't think of too many. I can't think of too many isolations that can be done with the forearm. Um, yeah, send a video. <laughs> that would be awesome. That would be the best. That way, I know exactly what we're working with here. All right. Oh, Ken Squat says this is perfect. I'm trying to learn the wheel now. Good, good. Also, want to shout out to Wesley Smith. Hello. Thank you, thank you for joining on the Facebook side. That's awesome. So, sounds like the wheel was a good success, which is good. Um, yeah, if you could just send me that video. If we're talking about isolations with the staff, I don't know a whole lot of them, but I definitely like this motion, and this is kind of, this is kind of different anyways. If you're doing a figure eight to the side with the staff, if you change your grip, if you just kind of raise it a little bit to where you can kind of feel the, the staff, the center of the staff is right in front of the bend of the elbow, you can create like these nice, these nice different motions. So now if we're doing a figure eight this direction, you're going to see it feels very different. It's almost going to have like a sword-like feel because most, except for we're holding it like a reverse grip sword-like feel. But what you can do from this position, once we do it, is as you swing forward like this to come across. So you know how we're cutting down from 12 o'clock to six o'clock. We add an extra rotation right here. So we twist the wrist out and over, and then you have like this lock-in that happens here. And then you can create another figure eight this direction. I wouldn't call it a wrist roll per se, but then as you do the figure eight this direction, when you go behind, you can unlock it and go back to your regular. So we're here, cradle it in, take it to the back, cradle it out, cradle it in, cradle it out, cradle it in. And it kind of almost has like this isolation type feel, especially as you try to keep your arm, like if you try to look at the staff, if you look at the staff and say, okay, I'm gonna to try to paint as tight of a circle as I possibly can while I move it, it will give you like this nice illusionary effect. Haven't worked that one too much, but um, it is nice. <laughs> All right, let me go ahead and take a look here. There we go. Yeah, when it comes to flow arts, I have, I have an intermediate amount of technical knowledge in that field. So sometimes when someone asks about some of the questions, 
Um, it's just not something I've practiced or I just don't know the terminology. But if you send me a video, I can at least take a look at it and tell you. All right. Since we don't have any questions right now, we're gonna just go ahead and do some double chucks. Let's go ahead and grab two nunchucks and see what we can do here. <sighs> All right, so L strikes I feel like are common, very common. One thing that people forget about L strikes, I'm gonna assume you know L strikes while we're working this pattern here. One thing that's really nice is anytime you swing down by your hip, you can lift up your leg and kind of do like this leg bounce here. So here, as we do this motion, um, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna kind of move them both horizontally. So anytime you do the cross here, so anytime we're doing this, anytime you slash down to your hip, you can lift up the opposite leg and just bounce it across the side, uh, bounce it across the leg to add some variation. Now you need to do something with the, with the other hand and it's very simple, you just bounce it across the arm and then bounce them back and then continue on with what you're doing. So we're here, boom, we can go back. That's just a nice little addition that you can do with L strikes. Um, let's see, another thing that you can think about too when you're doing your L strikes is, I think I've talked about this before, but the number one thing to realize with chucks and doubles is to, to realize if they're going the opposite direction or the, or the same direction. Whether they're going in reverse mode, which would be this, where if we're looking at my chest, they're moving upwards from the chest, or whether they're going straight, where they're going downwards from my chest. Really there's like, I would say there's probably, there's two main variants, which is if they're going the same direction, you have different moves, and if they're going opposite directions, you have different moves. So opposite directions, for instance, we got the butterfly, right? But it's hard to weave. You can't weave like this they have to be going the same direction in order to weave. So if we're looking at this from that perspective, then what we need to think about is the fact that we just need to learn how to change the direction of one nunchuck. The reason why we change direction of one is because if they're both going the same direction and we change the direction of one, now one is going the opposite direction while one hasn't changed at all, causing us to be able to access all the moves of the double nunchucks. So whenever you're doing double nunchucks, if you're not sure how to get to a move, First, see the direction that they're going. Even this is a direction. It may not look like a direction, but they're actually kind of spinning in this format. They're spinning against each other, meaning uh, they're not going with each other, but rather downwards. So like this is creating a circle this way, and this is creating a circle this way, which would cause this type of motion. When you start looking at things in terms of how they move, then you can also think of how to get them to work together. For instance, if we're in the butterfly, they're going opposite directions, then all we need to do is learn how to bounce. The best way, in my opinion, to learn how to change direction is you can either do a stall, where just the chuck swings outward, stall, swing it outward, and then what I basically do is I push my other arm forward more so I have more space for the chuck to stop, and then swing it the opposite way, and now all of a sudden we've changed direction. Stop, swing it the opposite way. Stop, swing it the opposite way. And it's, what's really neat is it creates a nice little combo too. You can just do it straight off that too. So basically you're spinning, pull it the opposite way and bring it back. Pull it the opposite way and bring it back. And that's really all you're doing. The up stalls are a little bit harder, but so if we're starting with this one here, I'll show you again here. I'll start with my right. And what's gonna happen is my left is gonna, my left is gonna push forward while my right kind of just kind of sinks over to the top, but then it stops for a second. You don't really hold it very long. This is just so you can understand. And then we reverse it to go the opposite way, right? Now they're going the same direction. I'm gonna take my other hand and do the exact same thing. So pop over the top like this. The other hand keeps spinning. And then it's gonna reverse back. Now we're going, see? We're going in the opposite direction, going upwards. Now this is gonna be a little bit different. So you're gonna to have to get used to this a little bit. But what's gonna happen here is my right hand is gonna sneak under, but it's the same concept. It doesn't have to be pretty. Just get it to sneak under here to stop. You won't be able to hold it very long or it's just gonna flop down, right? So what you do is you sneak it under and then you bring it back. And now we're going the same direction again and then you do the other hand. Sneak it under and bring it back and we're back to the original. Sneak it over, bring it back, sneak it over, bring it back, sneak it under, bring it back, sneak it under, bring it back. And you can actually kind of create this into a little combo once you get used to how this moves. And you just go back and forth with that 
but that will give you access to just about all the double nunchuck moves that you need to know. So not only is this a combo, but if you're spinning and you realize that you have to change directions, it's very easy to just do a part of that combo to get the chucks to move in the direction that you need it to go. So say I'm doing the weave, but I want to go into a reverse butterfly from the weave. Well, I move it here, bounce it up, and we're into reverse butterfly. But what if I'm in the weave and I want to do a regular butterfly? Well, I just do more of the combo. So if I'm weaving here, I do the regular butterfly, I know I'm in reverse, but if I do two more, then I'll be in normal. So one, oops, let's try that again. Here we go. So this puts us in reverse. One, two, we're in regular now. So if that makes sense, again, I'll say it again. If we're in butterfly, you do it one time, it becomes a weave. Do it again, it becomes a reverse butterfly. Do it again, it becomes a reverse weave, I guess you could call it. Do it again, and you're back to start. So it's here, one, oops, one, two, three, and we're into the butterfly mode. Um, there's other ways to think about it, of course. That's kind of a long-winded way to reach that point. But if you just understand that pattern, it'll give you access to all the double nunchuck moves in a seamless way so you don't have to stop. All right, let me just see here. Hostile. Yes, you've stated before that adding semicircles creates a completely different effect during a performance. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Anything that can create a pattern that uh, changes things up. And you know, even if you have these really advanced or amazing patterns, if you do the same thing over and over again, everyone gets used to it. So I think the goal is to change it up, but have the transitions to where it moves very fluidly. Because sometimes you'll see people do techniques and they're all different kinds of techniques, all different kinds of variety, but the fluidity is not there. It doesn't connect well. So it's almost kind of like listening to a college lecture where someone's just throwing out big words, but they mean like you don't understand any of it. So um, transitions itself are also important as well as creating a good diversity, I feel like. Yeah. All right. If there's any more questions, let me know. I think I might make this last call just because it's been a little bit more quiet this tonight uh, with regards to questions, but that's okay. You know, next time I'll try to advertise this a little bit sooner and see. Let me just see if there's anything I can find. Just making sure I don't have any emails or questions here. Um, have I had any? Have I had any responses in relation to my tour? I've had. A, I've only had a few. They're good ones. <laughs> Obviously, there's the UK. Um, we also have um, Japan. Of course, there's Costa Rica. And uh, what was the other one? Why can't I think about it? Hawaii. <laughs> Hawaii, yeah. Um, again, I've got almost two, one and a half years to two years to get it figured out. I'm going to start broadcasting it more as time goes on for sure because I want to make this thing go. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I'm in this point where I'm still kind of watching COVID carefully because I think, I think once COVID becomes less prominent that people will be more open to this kind of thing but at, right now i think doors are probably a little bit more closed just because of the fear of you know for good reasons fear of what you know what it could what could happen so all right let's go back to this real quick show you a fun little double nunchuck trick that is probably a little bit more advanced it looks like this it's kind of like glow stringing but there's a nice little move that you can do and the movement is very similar to an S catch. So we're gonna, this is kind of an advanced move, I would say, for what we're trying to do. If you know the S catch, you don't need to know the S catch to be able to pull off this double move. But if you understand the concept, you can apply it to this nunchuck motion. And it's gonna be in the same direction like this. And what's gonna happen is, you're gonna try to get the chucks to wrap across each other, almost like an S catch. Almost like, almost like this, see? So what we're trying to do is we're spinning this nunchuck and one chuck has to be a little bit more diagonal than the other because if they're coming across the same way, obviously they'll crash into each other and they'll stop each other's motion. So if I was standing sideways, one's kind of coming in, like this one's kind of coming in this way while the other one's coming in flat so they don't crash into each other. And what happens is the bottom, the one that's swinging, like this hand, this one that's swinging first has to capture it this direction. So as you can see, 
It's going into the rope, but right now I'm just gonna put it over here and it grabs this direction like this, right? And then this one, the other one, basically lands on top of your hand like this, and this creates a lock. Now the chucks are locked. It's very, very loosely locked, but they're locked. So we're here. See if you can just get to this catch right here where they both lock into each other. And again, I think the most important thing is kind of like this diagonal shoot that happens with this hand. Make sure they're not both horizontal or they'll crash into each other. There's a lot higher chances of them crashing into each other like this. Once you do this, um, the next part of it is going to be a very simple but kind of cool motion where they're gonna kind of reverse directions. So let's go ahead and go with the one that's on top of the hand first. So the left hand was just gonna bounce over to the top hand of here. So just see if you can just bounce this back and forth like this to start with, almost like a windshield wiper. So we're here, this pops it over to the other side. Now, we need some symmetry with this. Keep in mind you wanna kinda of keep the rope around the middle. So what you're gonna do with the bottom one is kind of similar except for you're gonna to try to pass it to your other hand and this hand's gonna open up and try to grab it like that. These things happen simultaneously though, so it looks like they're trading places. So the next thing, once you get the windshield wiper down like this, you're just gonna pass this back and forth, back and forth from one hand to the other. And then the last part of this is letting them do it at the same time. It can be a little bit tricky, especially if you have bigger chucks. This is easier with small chucks just because you have to have quite a grip to be able to grab, to be able to grab two chucks with one hand. Um, it also helps to kind of drop your elbows, to kind of move your elbows in the same direction like that. But that's gonna allow you to be, basically be able to pop them back and forth. So you get the lock in, boom, cross, cross. That's great. And then the way to get out of this is just pop this over the top like this, but you're, just, you're not trying to let it hit the top of your hand anymore. You're trying to push it out in the same diagonal pattern that they crossed in. And then this one just kind of pushes itself out on top of that. So in slow motion, it would be like, this diagonal comes in, this comes across the top, we pop, pop. And then we just open it up so we can open the circle so when we push this out, it unlocks itself and comes free. Yes, it is a challenging move. It sounds complicated, but the more you do it, the easier it gets, just like everything. All right, well, if there's no more questions for today, I think I'm gonna call it. We've done a we've done a good hour. Next week I will have. Um, usually, usually I've just been kind of flying by the seat of my pants. Um, we haven't really had a lot a lot of questions this week as as much as we had in the past. And I think some of that's just because I didn't advertise this one like I usually do. I just wanted to see what would happen if I just posted it at the regular time. So I think I think the next time what we're gonna do is we're gonna. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it more well known and we, we might even have a theme for it just so people know what to, like we have something to expect. But I do hope you guys are all doing well and um, appreciate you all coming to this one. I'm gonna try to do it a little bit differently next week, see if we can get more engagement, but still regardless, it was still good to see. Even answering one question is pretty awesome, so. <laughs> All right. With that said, I hope you all have a great weekend. And I'll definitely, don't forget, Sunday next week, we will be doing this again. All right. Take care.